In this episode, you're gonna get a summary of Robert Cialdini's Persuasion book. It's a phenomenal book on persuasion, on how to influence people, on how to be a better communicator. I think you're gonna love it, so let's do it. Robert Cialdini is one of the world's leading experts in the field of psychology of influence. His fascinating book, Influence, came out more than 35 years ago, but is still on the bookshelves of some of the most influential and successful people in the world. And while Influence deals with persuasion, the art and science of getting someone to yes, Cialdini's new book is called Persuasion, the process of arranging for recipient to be receptive to a message before they encounter it. In other words, it's essentially the psychological frame you deliver your message in. And the frame matters a lot. Cialdini spent years studying some of the top salespeople, marketers, negotiators and public speakers and what he noticed is that the top performers spend a lot more time crafting what they do and say before making a request than actually on the request itself. Persuasion offers a set of very practical ways of making people more receptive to your message, request your proposal before you even deliver to them. Just consider this example from the book. A consulting friend of the author was having issues with prospects asking for discounts and challenging his fees when he was making his pitch. And one day, the consultant plugged in a joke. As you can tell, I'm not going to be able to charge you a million dollars for this before saying his price. And after this casual joke, no one challenged his 75,000 consulting fee. So he made a permanent part of his sales presentation and he was never challenged again. So what he stumbled upon completely by chance was the powerful concept of price anchoring. By mentioning a million dollars, even as a joke, it made seem his 75,000 fee a lot less significant in comparison. Essentially, by persuading his prospects, he virtually eliminated a big objection. How can you make use of these powerful tactics? It all starts with attention. When you pay attention to something, it will automatically become more important to you, or at least it will seem that way. And mainstream media take full advantage of this on a daily basis. Experts believe that the media does not actually change people's mind directly. But what they can do is change what story or issue gets the most attention. They control what is being talked about. And when something or someone gets covered a lot, people assume it's important. And the lesson here is attention equals importance. If you want to persuade anyone of anything, you need to be able to capture, hold and direct their attention. Cialdini offers four tactics that can transform you into a master of attention. Number one is changing the direction of someone's attention. In the most trivial argument you might have at work or at home, you're trying to convince someone by giving them reasons. But this is typically the hardest way to change someone's mind as we have all experienced. A much easier and powerful tactic is to change what the person is paying attention to. As attention is limited and you can typically pay attention to only one thing at a time, when something new emerges, you almost immediately let go of the old. You can see this tactic in use by a lot of politicians. When they're asked about the negative effect of a construction project, for example, they never argue against it, but they change the narrative by talking about the new jobs the project creates or the economic effect it has on the neighborhood. By shifting the attention, they also shift the way people view the project. Tactic number two is asking the right questions. Using targeted questions is a powerful way of directing someone's attention to where you want it to be. Take this for example. In one Canadian study, people were asked one of two questions. Are you happy with your social life or are you unhappy with your social life? And although the questions might seem almost identical to most people, the results are nothing short of surprising. The people who were asked if they're unhappy were 375% more likely to say they were unhappy. How the question was phrased made one part of people think about the happiness in their life and the other people about the unhappiness of their life, hence the big difference in the results. Questions are a very powerful way of guiding someone's attention. 
Number three is grabbing attention. Before you can direct someone's attention, you first need to be able to grab it. And how do you do that? Using the time-tested attention grabbers of all time. Number one is sex. The main reason you see so many models on magazine covers and in advertisements. Attractive people make you look. And while you're looking, you also notice the headline, the product, and everything else. Number two attention grabber is danger. Similar, very similar to the sex, but the opposite message. Dangers and threats are attention magnets that the health industry is making very powerful use of all the time. And the third attention grabber, novelty. In order for something to be noticed, it must stand out. It must be new. It must be different. You might think, think of this, for example. If you receive junk mail in a bright pink or green or purple envelope, you most likely open it, at least the first time. In the sea of white letters you get every day, it will stand out demanding your attention. Tactic number four is holding the attention. Once you've grabbed the valuable attention, how can you hold it? By using the most interesting person in the world for everyone, themselves. Making a conversation about the other person by using you instead of people or they will make them pay attention or talking about their qualities and their characteristics. This is why I hear a lot of commercials use language such as in your 40s and overweight, here's our solution. Or are you a male in your 50s who's struggling to find happiness? Do this. By calling out these common characteristics, they're talking to you. They're talking to the specific person. So if you manage to make the topic about the other person, they will pay attention to you almost indefinitely. By now you've become a master of attention. So what is the next step in persuasion? Cialdini calls it unity. The feeling of being part of something bigger than yourself. It can be a shared group or a shared identity or even something as broad as shared world views. Think of this. When a sports team wins or loses, their fans never say the team lost or they lost. They typically say we lost. They are part of the team, although they're not actually on the field doing something. Similarly, religious people tend to refer to their churches as our church. And of course, the biggest unity of all, a family. There's nothing more united than a family. And this is why you see so many advertisements and companies use smart language that associates their product or solution with family. The lesson here is use language and actions to make people feel they're part of something bigger and that you are one of them. Invoke unity and it can influence them much more powerfully. And the final part of persuasion is connections. If you manage to engineer a new or a different connection, you can influence people much easier. Almost all big companies use this powerful tactic as part of their branding. This is why when you think of Mercedes-Benz, for example, you think of luxury. And when you think of Walmart, you most likely think of convenience or low prices. These associations have been carefully crafted by creating connections in your mind. And this is typically done by showing you a scenery of some sort or a good looking model or a well-known celebrity and then linking the product or company just by showing it. Just look at the next ad you see and you'll notice nothing more than a background and the product picture that often have nothing to do with each other but create a very powerful and subtle connection in your mind. Associations are very powerful connections. Connections are also formed by being specific with the language and words you use. Presenting something as an investment will have one connection versus presenting the same exact thing as a cost. And finally, using connections to create trust in yourself. Chodini, for example, shadowed a very successful alarm salesman. In the middle of his home presentation, he would slap his forehead and say that he's forgotten something important in the car. Then he would ask the million dollar question. I don't want to interrupt your presentation. Do you mind if I let myself out and back into your home? It's extremely subtle, but when you break it down, it's super powerful. Who do you let walk in and out of your house on your own? Only someone you trust, of course, a close friend or even a family member. And by evoking that man connection, the salesperson 
became a lot more trustworthy and as a result of course he made it much easier to get the sale. Let's sum it up. The next time you want to persuade someone, keep those three things in mind. 1. Attention. Where is it directed? Can you hold it? 2. Unity. Are you part of the team? Are you part of them? Can you demonstrate that in some form or fashion? And 3. Connections. What positive mental connection and association are you making in your conversation? Now let's see how you can make use of all these powerful tactics in your life. Hey, welcome back. So that was Robert Cialdini and Persuasion. It's a book on influence, a book on how to be a better communicator, but it's also a book on how you are being influenced by the outside world, by media, by advertisements, by big companies. It shows you, it opens your mind to how you're being influenced. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to take three, five days, ideally a week, and take a media fast. I want you to not listen to any news. I want you to not watch any TV. I want you to not go on social media and notice what this is going to do to your productivity, to your happiness, to your calmness level. Promise you, you'll be blown away. Because you wake up one day and you're excited about something, and then you go on social media, and then you see an advertisement for a poor country or something bad happened across the world, as it does every single day. It puts your mind from hear the productive thoughts of success you're gonna be have a good day to hear it primes your mind in a direction that you might not necessarily want it to be once you take a media fast once you cut yourself off for a week you're not gonna nothing is gonna change for one week but you're gonna be blown away by how much influence the outside world has on you and that's okay it happens to all of us that that's the that's in a way the beauty of persuasion it's so subtle that you don't even realize it. So cut yourself off for one week. You'll be blown away by how much more productive you become, by how much happier you become, by how much calmer you become in that one week. And then you're never gonna look at persuasion from the outside world the same way. That was Robert Cialdini's persuasion. That was my take on it. And now I pass on the question to you. What do you think about this book? What do you think about Robert Cialdini? Have you read Influence, his phenomenal book on persuasion that's before this one? Let me know in the comment section below. Take a media fast. I challenge you to do it for one week. You'll be blown away by the results. Have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one.